So the year is 2040. Driverless cars dominate the road. Pino and SpaceX have formed a joint venture with the passengers to take people into space. And robots run our household. Now this may seem like a scene from the Jetsons, for those of you who know what I'm talking about. But believe it or not, it's already happening. Christchurch Airport trialing it. SpaceX has planned it. And robots are coming to a town near you guys. But the question is, in this high-tech, futuristic world, am I going to be able to book my ticket into space with a lot of $50 bills? I highly doubt it. Cash will most probably be gone. In its place, digital currencies. <coughs> the real stuff, not the fake stuff from ANZ, BNZ, or any other bank that you may think of. However, how does blockchain come into play? In the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to share with you my experience with the impact that blockchain is having. In particular, the hype surrounding it. The question, is it achievable? And how does this affect you guys? First of all, it all started with Bitcoins back in 2008, 2009. And then everyone discovered that the underlying framework was blockchains, the distributed ledger technology. So I searched on the internet and I found this quite an interesting infographic from PWC. Sorry Deloitte guys, uh, <laughs> I'm sure you guys have one too. It explains how blockchain technology works quite well. If I zoom into the top part, you can see that it defines blockchain as a decentralized ledger of all transactions across a peer-to-peer -peer network. Participants can confirm transactions without the need for a central certifying authority. Potential applications include fund transfers, setting trades, voting, and many other uses as well. So there's a lot to take in if you're hearing for the first time. How does it work? There's a diagram down below where it starts off with someone requesting a transaction. And that's actually quite key, requesting a transaction. And I'll come back to that later on. Next, that transaction or that message is then broadcast onto the peer-to-peer -peer network. So it's shared with all the computers or nodes. The nodes then validate the message. That is, it runs it through an algorithm, some software. On the right-hand side there, you can see that the transaction can involve cryptocurrencies, contracts, records, or other information. And that's actually quite key in understanding how blockchain technology can be applied to several different industries. Because it's just information, it's a message, it's transactions. Finally, once the transaction is verified, it's packaged into what we call a block. It's linked to a history of blocks forming the chain, and then the transaction is complete. What are the potential applications? I'm not sure about you, but when I was reading about blockchains, I couldn't quite understand how this new technology could be applied to the automotive industry. Maybe financial services, because it's, you know, it's currencies related, but in particular voting, healthcare, and a whole range of others as well. But it can be. And if you're following around the hype on the internet, you can see that the Australian Stock Exchange has announced they're going to build a blockchain for their equities trading market. You can see that there's a quite a strong statement where blockchains will be used by 15% of major banks by 2017, which is this year. And our neighbors across the ditch, Powerledger, which is a very interesting company, they're expanding their trial of blockchain technologies in the electricity and energy space as well. So there's a lot of hype about what blockchains can do across all sorts of different industries. I wanted to take, uh, draw attention to this particular article here. Has anyone here heard of R3? A yeah, couple people, yeah? So this article was published in January this year, where it says that R3 will close blockchain's biggest ever investment. They haven't done it yet. Again, it's all part of a hype. But down here, the investment was supposed to be $200 million. It's been downsized to a paltry 150 
million dollars, which is still huge. The reason why I included this was because, has anyone followed the recent debacle about one and a half weeks ago around R3, Corda, and blockchain? No? This guy here, this journalist, wrote this uh, article here. R3 appears to admit defeat, stops blockchain development. And it created a huge Twitter storm, online debacle, etc. And the background behind that is that Corda have created this technology they call DLT, Distributed Ledger Technology. And they've said, well, we're not in blockchain. We've never talked about blockchain. It's all about a distributed ledger technology. So when I saw this, the first thing I did was I scratched my head because I had no idea the difference between blockchain technology and DLT. I dug into it, spent three days, wrote a whole blog about it, and I'm still not 100% clear what the difference is. So if anyone here knows, I'd love for you to share it at the end as well. So there's a lot of hype, there's a lot of, not misunderstanding, but different interpretations of the technology. Is it achievable? Someone requests a transaction. That was on the slide from PwC. What does that actually mean? Essentially, it's a claim of ownership. If you take the example, the first bullet point there, I am the owner of five yet-to-be-spent Bitcoins that is under my control. So the key there being that it's yet to be spent, therefore it's spendable, and under my control, meaning that I can prove it. And I can prove that with cryptography, with maths. My blood type is B. Again, you're claiming something that you can put on the blockchain. And the last example down below, I'm the owner of 15 minutes of ride time in a driverless car. So the question remains, is this achievable? Well, yes it is, because the underlying fundamentals relies on cryptography, as we talked about, and a lot of other maths that actually works. However, this is all still an experiment, and everyone else is experimenting, because none of it's really proven at this point in time. How does this affect you? Well, I think it depends, because Blockchains will change the world, but there are two schools of thought. There's a huge drive at the moment to make everything simple and easy to use. So what will happen is that your interaction with the website will still stay the same. However, when you peek under the covers, it's blockchain technology that's driving that. As an example, this is what a Bitcoin address looks like. And that looks pretty yuck. And there's a push to make it a lot easier to understand, to read. However, think back to when bank numbers first came out. That's a string of like 10 digits. And if that was the first time you saw that, you would have thought, holy cow, how am I going to remember that? Right. So again, the question is, how will it affect you? Well, it depends how you participate. Has anyone heard of the book, The Blockchain Revolution, by Donald Alex Tapscott? Yeah, not many. I'd really recommend that book, because the whole book is around how blockchain technologies will revolutionize the world, and it gives concrete examples. This is him here. It wasn't the first book that he wrote. If you note down here, he wrote The Digital Economy in 1994, and that was before the internet started. So he knows what he's talking about. So again, the question to you is, do you want to stand on the sideline and consume these amazing innovative products? Or do you want to learn about this and participate in the blockchain economy? Because there is a shortage of skills out there on people who really know this stuff. What can you do? Well, first of all, you can get involved. I'd highly recommend reading about this topic. And when I say that, I don't mean reading articles on the internet or blog posts. Pick up a book, Don's book, there are lots of other books out there that really paint the whole picture and not piecemeal information that you, when you read, 
You've got to read 15 other posts just to understand that first one. Join a community. Thank you for coming. Get hands on. Buy some bitcoins. Buy some Monero, Dash, Zcash, Ethereum. Download a wallet. Understand, experience it. And the last point here I think is the most important to share what you know. Because each one of us learning by ourselves, we can only learn so much and so fast. But coming together as a community, we can all help each other. So the year is 2040, and you are in complete control of your personal information. It's called self-sovereign identity. You can go ahead and monetize this any way you wish. You can sell it to whomever, and you can share portions of your own information to other people as well. The question is, how will you choose to participate in this new changing world?